Well, good morning. It's really great to be able to have this time to be with you again today. And we're so glad that you're, you're taking this, this opportunity to tune in and uh, we can come together through this, uh, this awesome uh, technology that's available to us. We do want to encourage people to continue to tune in Sunday morning at 930. And the reason we want to do that is just to create that sense of togetherness that we're all meeting in our homes, but we're all meeting at the same time for this time. We're all time. doing it. Like, yeah. I'm doing it over here, and you're doing it over there, but we're still all doing it together. So this, this time of togetherness and connection, and we're so glad that uh, we could be with you this morning. Yeah. Um, a couple of things about the service itself. Uh, you are either sent a link via email or we now have a connecting point on our website. So you can also go up on our website and click that uh, service link and it will get you connected as well. Uh, the service will be available throughout the week so if you can't tune in at 9.30 on Sunday you'll be able to catch it at other times during the week. and. Um, you can, can uh, make sure that you make that connection uh, whenever it uh, works out for you. We do want to uh, share some thank yous that Pastor Kari and I got this week. And uh, it's really been very wonderful to get those uh, notes of encouragement and support. And we just, we're not going to share names, but we want to lift up a couple that we got this week. So maybe, Pastor Carr, you want to start? Sure. It was helpful to hear feedback, too. It helped us know that people were able to tune in with us and were able to worship from home. Yeah. So that was good. All right. Um, one that I got was, uh, we enjoyed the live stream service from our couch with our jammies and coffee. Uh, here's one that I got. Good morning, pastors. I am so thankful for all the ways in which you are working to keep our church family together and strengthen our faith. I pray that your loved ones stay healthy and God continues to bless you. I really enjoyed the live stream service. If I can't be there, it's nice to know we were all there in spirit. I sang out loud. Not sure my husband appreciated that. Peace be with you. <laughs> Here's another one. Dear pastors, we are happy to be able to plug into the service yesterday. A first time experience for us and we did have our candle lit and spirits lifted. Just had to send a text to thank you for setting up the stream of your worship service this morning. I love worshiping with you all, and to have the opportunity was a blessing. Prayers to you and the Trinity community in this time. Hi, Pastor Tim and Pastor Kari. I just thought I'd send a quick note to say thanks for all you are doing to keep us connected in this unique and challenging time. We enjoyed the service this morning and appreciate your efforts to find new ways for all of us to remain engaged with the church. The kids were excited that they finally got to bring the dog to church. <laughs> this is how God lets me know he's here. Even before the service, I was singing, We Are the Church, and then we sang it together with live stream. God is good. Do I have the last one? Yeah, you have All right, I have one, one more. Thank you for putting this stuff together. I need community and Jesus over here. Yeah. It was fun. It was good to hear. Yeah. We appreciate your prayer comments, too. We, we are grateful for, for you at this time. Yeah, and we, we wanted to lift those up, number one, for us to say thank you for all the encouragement and support that we're getting, um, whether that be a text message or an email message. Uh, those mean a lot to us. But also to show you that Hopefully, uh, you're doing that with other members of the congregation, maybe with your neighbors, family members, that sending that email, sending that text can mean a lot, and we just want to encourage you to do that during this time. Okay, the next thing we want to just uh, touch base on before we begin today is that uh, prayer requests, those are going to continue to be really important, and uh, we want to keep collecting those and sharing those. So there's a couple ways that we're going to be able to continue to do that. Number one, we've, we've now set up a uh, prayer portal on our website. So if you'd like, you can go to the website, you can submit a prayer request. It does take a little bit of time before it will post because Pastor Kari and I need to take a look at it. And uh, then we make that live. 
And so it'll be up there, so check out our website. You can continue to call those into the church office. You may need to leave a voicemail, but you can do that. Or you can contact Pastor Carrie or I directly on our cell phones. Those are all ways in which we can receive uh, prayer requests. There's also been a couple members of the congregation who are offering to help out with that. And so they may be reaching out and contacting uh, members and uh, are just going to be one more way in which we can do that. In addition to that, maybe Pastor Carr, you want to talk sure. about your uh, digital meetings that you're doing. So Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at noon, there are options to connect in real time. So Tuesday and Thursday, I'm leading a devotion, and Faith Bartelt is helping with the music. And that, it will be on Facebook and Instagram. So it just comes right at the top if you go to Trinity's Facebook or Trinity's Instagram right at the top it just shows up you don't have to click on it once you're in those uh, Facebook or Instagram then on Wednesday I have like a drop-in coffee meeting over zoom and uh, for that one you need the link so the link is on the website or uh, Pam has been sending out an email and all you do is click on the link at noon and it takes you to the to a live meeting with me if you don't already have Zoom, it's going to ask for permission to download it. Just give it permission, but it's the same link. And once you have Zoom, it'll just take you right there. Yeah. So there are several ways in which we're staying engaged and connected to one another and connected to God and, and our spiritual well-being through all of this. And so those are some of the highlights of that and ways in which you can remain connected. And it's been uplifting for me, too, to have those points of connection with people. I, I miss seeing yeah. you all in real life, in real time. And so when I get to see you interact, it at, even if it's over social media, it means a lot. So I look forward to that each week. Yeah, we are so thankful for these uh, technologies that are available to us. And uh, I think they're just going to keep getting better each week as we continue to find ways to engage and connect with one another. Final thing before we begin our service today is at the end of our service time, there's going to be a, uh, a note from one of our council members. It's going to be our council president, our congregation president, and he's going to uh, share some updates and plans going forward. So I encourage you to just kind of continue to watch that to get more information. All right, with that, hopefully you had a chance to get your candle ready. And so I'm going to ask Pastor Kari to get our candle out. And um, we're going to have a reading of scripture as we begin our time of worship this morning. So if you can get your uh, candle out and uh, something to light it with ready. Uh, reading from John chapter 8. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. May we gather together in his presence and it is promised to be with us uh, as we begin this time of worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. God of all good things, we give you thanks for this time to worship you as a community of faith. We may be separated by miles, but we are united in Christ. Fill our homes with your spirit, fill our hearts with peace, and fill our minds with the sure and certain hope of the resurrection. In Jesus' strong name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to transition to a song now, and just like last week, we're going to use one that was previously recorded. I really enjoyed that because I felt like I was kind of brought into the congregation even though we were apart. So I hope you had a similar experience. Yeah. Uh, one of the things with this uh, platform that we're using to share the service today is that it has a tendency to turn the sound down. So just know that's uh, something the program is doing. It's not something we can con control on our end. The only thing you can do, Pastor Kari, signaling, you this might want to turn. Have it handy so you can <laughs> just turn it up and then back down. Turn it up and back down. But uh, let's gather together and uh, sing out loud in your own homes.
was thinking about uh, the message for today and, and what I might be able to share with you and uh, speak to you about. And as I was thinking about it, I thought, well, maybe what we needed to do is to just kind of do something that feels a little more normal. You know, uh, pick the lectionary text that was assigned for today and just preach on that and sort of almost uh, treat it as if, you know, nothing's different and, and just kind of go on and, and uh, make it feel, like I said, a little more like the normal routine. And as I was thinking about that, you know, one of the things that hit me is it's like, what is normal these days? You know, there's not, not much in our lives right now that feels that normal. And so as I thought about it, I, I just realized that, that that wouldn't really be able to speak to what's going on in all of our lives. And, and so what I've really been trying to do this past week is to really listen and discern, you know, what God might be saying to me uh, about our current situation, about what we're going through, and how I can share that with you. And so today, that's what I hope to do, is to just be able to share with you uh, discovery in, in terms of listening to God and seeking God's guidance in this time uh, that I can share with you, and uh, that will hopefully help us to put some perspective on things we're going through in terms of a spiritual light and uh, what that means for us in the days ahead. There was a woman and she was stalled in traffic. Imagine what that would be like. And there's these cars, you know, behind her and she's uh, out of her car. She's got the hood up. She's trying to frantically look and figure out what's going on and what the problem is, why her car is stalled. And of course, what's the guy who's right behind her doing? I mean, he's just laying on the horn. Eh, 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 eh. And she's, you know, just searching in vain. And finally, she kind of hits her max. And she walks back to his car. And she said, if you would like to go look under the hood of my car, try and figure out what's going on, I'd happily sit here and honk for you. Uh, we're not a very patient people, are we? I mean, when it really comes down to it, uh, when we get held up, you know, we got things to do. We want to keep moving. We want to go, go, go. And, and I think that uh, it can be really hard for us to, to settle into uh, being patient and, and taking some time. Let's do a quick little test to see where your patience quotient as I made that up. But just to see kind of uh, how patient you are on a day-to-day -day basis. So your car is being fixed and you're at the car shop and you're sitting there uh, while your car is being worked on. One hour goes by, car's not done. Two hours go by, Car's not done. You start to get into the third hour. Car probably isn't going to be done. So you take advantage of brushing up on the 2003 issues of Reader's Digest that are sitting there. You enjoy the uh, sipping on the coffee that was made early in the morning that uh, you're drinking out of a styrofoam cup as you're, you're uh, sitting there as your car is being worked on, or you storm up to the owner of the shop and you give them a verbal flogging. You know, you're a busy person. You got to get moving. You got to get going. Where, where are you on that spectrum? Uh, and, and how would you do in terms of your patience quotient? One of the hard things right now for all of us is we just don't know. We just don't know how long this whole thing is going to take. And, you know, there's some big questions. Will we be able to get back to work soon? Will we be able to get back to school soon? Will we be able to get out to eat soon? Will we uh, get to go on that summer trip that we have planned? 
will we be able to come back to church soon? There's a lot of these questions and, and things we're wondering about, and, and we just don't know, and that's so hard. You know, it's March 29th today, and this stay-at-home order is supposed to go till April 21st. Ah! I mean, that's really hard to stomach, isn't it? We just don't know. We're going to look at our current situation then uh, with that in mind. And we're going to try and, and look at our situation and find out where is God in this and, and what does God have to say to us. And to set that up today, I'm going to have you watch a short little video clip here. Have you ever said, when is this meeting over? When will this class end? When will the waiter bring our food? When will I get a job? When will I get married? When will we have a child? When is the last time you started a sentence or a thought with, when? Last month, last week? When this video started, when will this be over? We are conditioned to want to know when. God does things differently. There is another four-letter word that God seems to love. Wait. It's something we all have to do. But something special happens when we allow God into our wait. In the morning, I lay my requests before you and wait expectantly. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. My whole being waits, and in His word, I put my hope. So after waiting patiently, Abraham received what was promised. When we wait with God, He begins to work in us. God just might be waiting for you to wait. Yeah, that word wait, that's a powerful biblical word, isn't it? Wait. It's not one that we might think of in a time like this. But it seems that, that perhaps there's, there's something going on there that we need to tune in and listen to. A number of years ago, there was a, a test conducted. It was called the Marshmallow Test. And it worked this way. That they took some four-year-olds and they put them in a room and an experimenter was there with them. They uh, were told that they were going to get to eat some marshmallows, but the experimenter had to step out of the room for a few minutes. And what the kid could do is, the kid could uh, eat a marshmallow right now if they wanted to, but if they did that, they'd only get to eat the one. If they waited till the experimenter got back, they could have two. So when the uh, experimenter left, of course, they observed these children, and it was really interesting that uh, some of the kids uh, developed some real, real interesting tactics in, in terms of helping them kind of wait till the researcher got back. Some of them would sing songs. Some of them would tell themselves stories. Some of them played with their fingers to kind of divert themselves. One kid even got down and licked the table, maybe thinking that the marshmallow taste <laughs> could transfer itself. It was really interesting as the, this uh, group of Stanford University researchers followed the children after this experiment uh, and tracked them. And here's what they found. Those who were able to wait as four-year-olds grew up to be more socially competent, better able to cope with stress, and less likely to give up under pressure than those who could not wait. And of course, those who could not wait, who jumped in and ate that marshmallow right away, it was kind of the opposite. They got frustrated really easy, they uh, kind of crumbled under, under pressure, they got into more trouble, they were, uh, had, you know, uh, other issues that came with that. And so it's interesting to see uh, just how significant 
that concept of waiting can be, just psychologically. You know, every one of us at some juncture in our lives is going to have to learn to wait. It's, it's just kind of part of life, and it's going to come our way inevitably. Now, that word from Scripture is one that just has been jumping out at me all week. Wait. You know, uh, when this first started to develop here in our neck of the woods, and we knew it was going to start to impact the church, I just kind of thought, you know, yeah, we're going to operate and function differently, but we're just we're going to be able to keep moving forward. And we're just going to kind of keep pressing on and be able to just kind of work with this. And then this past week, uh, when we got that uh, safer at home order and more businesses started closing and, you know, we had to start looking at some realities here at church, it started to sink in to me. <laughs> that we weren't going to be able to just kind of keep moving on uh, and function uh, differently, but kind of in a normal fashion. And so that, that, that word, wait, just really uh, has touched me and hit me. We could have gone to a lot of Bible passages today. Uh, there's a psalm, uh, many psalms, and you saw that in the video clip, that talk about waiting for the Lord. There's that uh, verse from Isaiah 40, um, you know, that those who wait on the Lord will mount up their strength like eagles. Uh, but the passage that, that uh, I settled on today comes from Romans chapter 8. So hopefully you have your Bible there, and I'm going to invite you to open up to uh, Romans chapter 8 today. And you'll see... Uh, uh, Citation for the scripture passage on the bottom of your screen there. So we're in Romans chapter 8. We're going to look at verses 18 through 25 today. St. Paul writes, I consider that the sufferings of this present age are not worth comparing with the glory about be, to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly while we wait for the adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Well, I, I hope you heard those words, wait, that St. Paul um, brings out here in this passage of Scripture. It kind of sounds a little bit like delayed gratification, doesn't it? That there's something in the future that he wants us to be looking at, even though some, some realities of our, our present day and present situation might be out of whack, or maybe even are presenting hardships for us. You know, the Christian hope is not embedded in the created order. It's not something that we just figure out for ourselves. That's not the message of Scripture. That's not the message that God gives to us in His Word. Our hope is due to an extraordinary act of God in history, in His sending His Son, Jesus, the Messiah, the Christ, to come into our broken world our world that experiences so much separation, so much anxiety, so much hardship and pain. That Jesus comes into this creation and into this world to set things right. St. Paul is very clear about that here in Romans chapter 8. That we're reminded that our destiny, 
that our futures are in the hands of an all-loving God. And what is that all-loving God focused on? And what does he want for us and all of creation? It's redemption. It's redemption. It's the transformation of life itself. We can see then that this redemption is going to take on sufferings. Sufferings of this present age. And, and St. Paul speaks about that here in, in chapter 8. And these sufferings are real. You know, sometimes I, I hear Christians sort of shrug them off. And just, you know, treat them as secondary things. No, they're, they're real. That there are hardships that people face. And it's not what God wants. But it is part of our experience. And it can be part of our earthly journey. And, and the other thing about that then is not that God just uh, has left us to our own devices, but it's that God cares. It's that God cares. And that God uh, wants us to know that, that he is with us and that he is uh, reaching out to us. We also need to be reminded that not all suffering is to be evaded. And, you know, one of our clearest examples of that as Christians is when Christ goes to the cross. That God had a bigger plan in mind there. And that Christ comes and he obediently takes on that role of the one who is going to bring redemption through suffering. That, that Christ is going to go through that for us. And that because of God's uh, purposes and love, that he is going to come through on the other side. And that same promise that God has made to Christ is then given to each one of us. That God is with us in our sufferings, in our hardship, and in our pain. And that uh, Paul is really proclaiming that God is for us. If you were to look a little bit further in that passage... Uh, in verse 35, Paul asks this question. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? He's just piling on all of those hardships, all of those struggles, all of that suffering. He's piling it on. And he's saying, will any of those things lead us to conclude that God has forsaken us and forgotten us? If you look down in verse 31, Paul, or 37, Paul writes, No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. It is through Christ now that we become united with God in a bond that will never be broken. God's love and redemption continues to come to us each and every day. And it is about Christ's great story of coming to set things right through his suffering, death, and resurrection. So, in what ways in your life are you uh, having the most difficulty of waiting right now? Maybe just take a moment to think about that. What's hardest for you to wait for right now? What kind of hopes or, or aspirations or dreams are difficult for you? You know, when we think about waiting on God, it's not some passive thing that we do. It's not just sitting around uh, waiting until we get what we want. It's not sitting around and kind of evading something that we have to go through. But it's about having that confidence that even in the midst of that, that God is for us. That God cares about us. That God is continuing to reach out to us in love to unite us with him and his greater purposes. So, if you're feeling anxious, 
the directive of Scripture is to draw to Christ. Draw to Christ and put your trust in Him. Uh, that we all, at this time, should be looking to the Lord and seeking Him. But we have to be ready for that word that He might have for us. Be patient. Trust. Trust and know that I have this in my hands. Trust and know that I love and care for you. Trust and know that my good purposes will uh, be worked out in, in my timing and in my plan and in my ways. We don't just have to sit on the sideline. That we can um, be engaged in prayer. You know, we've been talking about that in this service today, how important it is for us to be praying for one another, be praying for people who are on the front lines of this, this uh, pandemic, be praying for other churches in terms of how they're going through this struggle, be praying for people in the healthcare uh, system, be praying for people who are helping to supply and, and get things uh, to people that they need. Uh, sometimes that's medical supplies, it could be food, it, it can be other things that we need uh, for life to be able to function and to continue. We can also then, and, and we've been talking about this uh, and trying to remind you that we can reach out. We can reach out to that neighbor. We can reach out to that uh, fellow congregation member. We can reach out to that family member. That there, there are things that we can be doing as, as we go through this time. The most important thing for us to remember today is that we wait on the Lord. We wait knowing uh, and have the confidence that God is part of the solution that's going to come out of this. And that God is part of our lives and that God is with us. May that word be with you today and this week as you face whatever situations you have to face. And may we always remember that it is His glory and it is His service that we are here for each and every day. Amen. Well, I want to thank you for the prayer requests this week so that we could pray with you and then celebrate with you when prayers have been answered. It has brought hope and um, a connectedness that I greatly appreciate. So we're going to move into a time of prayer now, and at the end, I'm going to leave a time of silence. And um, I will be silent, but that's an invitation for you to then speak in your home, to offer prayers together uh, with the people in your house. And they don't have to be eloquent. They can just say the words that come out of your mouth so that you can pray for things um, that matter to you. And then I'll finish at the end and we'll join in the Lord's Prayer together. So let us pray for the church, the world, and all people according to their needs. God of the universe, we thank you for your constant presence and your promise to sit beside us and give us your peace. We are so grateful for this time of worship with our coffee, jammies, and pets for this time to connect with you and with one another. Jesus, this is your church, and we pray for congregations in this community and around the world. Help us to reach people with the love of God in their homes and in their hearts. I pray for Trinity, for the leadership as they plan for the future when the weeks ahead are so uncertain. Help us to connect in meaningful ways to you and to one another. Lord, we pray for all who are struggling in this uncertain time, for doctors and nurses and all in the medical field, for teachers and students as they navigate a new way of learning. Lord, we remember that not all homes are safe and not all bellies are filled, and we ask you to be with all those, with all of them and keep them safe and fed. We pray for those who are out of work, those struggling with anxiety and depression, Lord, we need your comfort and your peace. We ask for healing for the sick, especially Jerry, Marilyn, Laureen, and David. 
We pray for those grieving the loss of a loved one, especially the family and friends of Ruth Karstensen, Liz Blanc, Dan Johnson, and Dee Dee Counter. And for the prayers we lift up from our home. All this, Lord, and whatever else you see that we need, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Pray with me the prayer Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Well, we're going to go out singing. But remember that at the end of our final hymn, we'll have a chance to hear a word from a council member. Hi, I'm Kevin Eggers, and I'm the Congregation President here at Trinity, and I'd like to give you an update. Well, as you know, the uh, COVID-19 emergency orders have affected us here at Trinity. Our building is shut down. In fact, here in the worship space, is about 60 degrees. We've turned the boilers off. We've uh, closed the, down the refrigerator and the kitchen and stuff like that, so those big energy draws are off. Our outside groups are no longer meeting here either. Um, the truth is that this has affected our finances quite a bit. Um, we have had to lay off our staff. Our custodian is fully laid off. 
Pam and Marina are both working on very limited hours, doing just the bare minimum to keep us going. Um, and our pastors are making a sacrifice. They are going to be taking a pay cut to help us get through these difficult times. I'd like to encourage everyone at Trinity to just continue in your support, continue your giving. Um, to that end, we've sent out letters to every member of the congregation asking you for your continued support. Um, these are difficult times, and we're trying to make the best decisions we can for Trinity, both for our present and for our future. I want to thank everyone here at Trinity who's been continuing to give, continuing to help, the pastors, the staff who's, that are working on producing this worship video and everything else that they're doing. And I just ask you to continue to pray for our ministry here at Trinity. Thank you.